Hey y'all here at OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the Amazfit GTS 4. As the newest flagship wearable in their current lineup, the GTS 4 still has very similar overall dimensions as previous gen watches. In fact, here's a quick size comparison with the GTS 2 that we also reviewed a while back, and you can tell that the overall body is almost identical in terms of the way that it feels, although notably they were able to shrink down on the bezel size, giving us a slightly larger 1.75 inch OLED display compared to the 1.65 inch found on the previous GTS 2. Everything here is symmetrical and it is indeed a very bright display which is easy to interact with thanks to the 2.5D curved glass which makes swipe interactions feel very smooth and overall sunlight visibility is also quite good albeit it's not a transflective display. Now as you can tell here just like the previous gen models it has a always on display mode in the sense that after a few seconds the screen will time out to save on power but still show a simplified watch face. Frame if the watch is still constructed out of an aluminum alloy which feels very premium along with a crown key that has a decorative Amazfit accent piece. One change here compared to the GTS 2 is that this crown key is now fully rotatable, so you can use it to interact with various menus and settings, and the watch has very good haptic vibrations, which is giving you the confirmation that you've actually scrolled and done an action. And on the back, we can also see there's a glossy plastic polycarbonate frame, which houses the contacts for charging, which by the way, although it looks very similar to the GTS 2 charger, it's actually ever so slightly wider apart in terms of the prongs, which means that if you have an older charger lying around, unfortunately it won't be compatible with the newest GTS 4. What is nice though is there is definitely an upgraded array of biosensors, which Amazfit claims is going to be more accurate and also power efficient. It allows you to track things like the typical heart rate, SpO2 for blood oxygen, barometer for air pressure and elevation, along with also a built-in compass, along with other standards such as Wi-Fi, built-in Bluetooth. There is no cellular option, but again, you can use Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to quickly pair with your phone. And just like before, there is integrated GPS, which allows you to track your route when running outside without necessarily bringing along your phone. Now, two features that have been brought over to the GTS 4, which is an improvement over the GTS 3, is they have retained the microphone and speaker, which which was first introduced on the GTS 2, but then unfortunately got removed in the third generation model, and instead they wanted you to upgrade to the Pro version, which was a little unfortunate, but good to see that now on the base GTS 4, those features are back on board answer phone calls, as well as trigger the voice assistant, including Alexa support, and also hear it as it is talking to you in certain sports and workout modes, which is pretty neat, along with now having about 2.6 gigs of built-in storage, which you can use to store music locally on the watch, using it like a dedicated MP3 player, so you can even connect this to a pair of wireless headphones, and again, completely leave your phone at home. Other ratings here, very quickly, including the water resistance at 5 ATM, is still the same as before, and the band straps are 20 millimeters, very similar, they can be also replaced and detached quite easily. Taking a closer look at the UI next, although it is very similar to past Amazfit watches, because I haven't reviewed the GTS 3, for me it's actually a bigger change than I was expecting, as the company has recently rebranded, and now they're calling this the ZEP OS 2.0. Now, it's still going to be a more lightweight and energy efficient OS that's simpler, not quite as stacked with features as something like an Android Wear or Apple Watch, which means that battery efficiency is still one of the strengths. This guy here can last for about eight days before you need to recharge it again, and that's a contrast with just one or two days most of those other Android Wear or Apple Watches will last you. Primarily now, there is a handful of custom applications which you're able to further download from the companion app and push them over to the watch, which is something that I didn't expect. So some of those features include mini games, as well as additional utility tools like a calculator, as well as even controls for GoPro. So if you have an action camera, you can use this as a remote. And there's other small apps as well that are continuing to be updated and you can find using the companion app and push those over. However, the overall selection is still much more limited with that being said, compared to, again, Android Wear or Apple Watch, which has had more time to curate and have more developers jump on board. Right now, all of the apps that you see here have pretty much been created by Amazfit themselves, but it's good to see that they're still trying to further increase their catalog of functions over time. Same thing permeates to a lot of those UI elements that you'll find on this watch. All of these widgets now can essentially be interacted with. You can scroll down to take a look at more detailed stats, which are elements 
elements that uh, just adds in a bit more details of what you're able to track directly from the watch itself compared to having to rely on the phone to take a closer look at some details like this, uh, which previous models like the GTS2 had more limited and simpler UIs. So on here you can tap to now check out more of those details, including this weather widget, which I do really like in terms of the animations. It always matches the condition of the weather outside, and you can tap to even take a look at highs and lows in terms of temperature during the day, which is really thoughtful. Not to mention the ability to take a look at sunset and sunrise times throughout the day, as well as the moon rise and moon set times, and even tide information. And overall interaction feels still quite smooth and responsive. We can drag down to access some quick launch shortcuts, including the ability to turn on or off the auto detection for the brightness control, enter into a theater mode so it will go into do not disturb, night mode, as well as toggle on or off various features like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, turn on a quote-unquote flashlight mode, just turns the entire screen white to act as a small light in the dark, which is actually pretty effective, and there's also a water expel mode, so if you are, say, taking a shower with this, this mode will play a series of sounds and kind of push out the liquid from the speaker using vibrations, which is pretty neat. It's a feature that is also found on the Apple Watch, but it's still nice to find on here. We can still swipe up to access any notifications and even trigger those a smart assistant functions if you are paired with Alexa. What's the weather today? So you get the idea, anything that you're able to do on your Echo Smart Speaker, you can trigger on here, include smart home automation, turning things on or off, creating checklists, alarms, simple commands that Alexa can answer. It may not be quite as intelligent as, say, Google Assistant. It's still really nice to find and definitely unlocks more features, especially the voice-based input, I think, makes a lot of sense on a smartwatch since the screen size is smaller to begin with. Aside from that, again, scrolling over to the left, you'll find a carousel of various widgets and apps, including this screen that now consolidates some of your currently used applications as cards, which you can access at a glance. It's pretty smart. But here we have a music player app, for instance, which again, allows you to play back music stored directly on the watch itself. So here is a quick demo of what the speakers sound like. All right, so pausing things there as expected for such a small speaker on your wrist, it's not gonna be the best in the world, but it definitely is functional for grabbing your attention, voice prompts, things like that. And more importantly, again, you can also pair this thing to wireless headphones to enjoy better sounding audio. Another tab over shows you your Pi Health. This is basically out of 100 telling you how active you've been, uh, keeping into mind all of the various health stats, including sleep, including your duration spent during exercises, all of that goes into this one consolidated score that's a little easier to understand at a glance. Heart rate stats and your heart rate zone in terms of where you currently sit at, this time that you've spent during those activities, the SpO2 blood oxygen monitor, it tends to have to be sitting relatively still for you to get an accurate measurement there, which is a contrast with heart rate and step count, for instance, which you can still be active and it will be doing the tracking automatically during the day. We do have other workouts which you're able to trigger, and there's a pretty long list here of over 150 sports that you're able to find. And during these sessions, it will either activate the GPS and or heart rate tracking and step count tracking, calorie counting for those types of uh, sports and tell you how long you've been performing that activity. So if if we tap to start, start an activity, again, you can hear that it's using that speaker to also give you the voice prompts as you are doing that sport, which is pretty neat. The watch also touts automatic recognition of about eight sports. Simpler activities like running, for instance, if you've initiated for a few seconds, it will begin to track automatically and save that as a session for you, even if you aren't necessarily poking through the menus, which is also pretty smart. Afterwards, you'll see some of your workouts recorded, and you can then review and see what the overall effect has been. Again, we are able to make and receive phone calls directly on the watch itself, thanks to that microphone and built-in speaker. You can also enter certain cards uh, through the companion app. So for instance, you can scan in QR codes and barcodes 
Afterwards, it will show up on the watch when you pull it up and you can then use this to scan at various cashiers and stores, even though it isn't really the same thing as NFC. Other things here include setting up alarms. You can take a look at any calendar notifications and additional things like reminders you can also save from your app and it will push them over. We can also take a look at again the compass, some basic sensors on here which are all working pretty much as expected. Uh, no real issues here in terms of the primary accuracy. It will also tell you your air pressure and current elevation. Simple breathing exercises, stopwatch functions, countdown timers, they're all pretty simple stuff that we've come to expect, along with the world clock function that allows you to add multiple cities, which you can also glance at converted times around the world. Now further down here, all of these ones are applications which I then downloaded myself, but just to give you guys maybe a closer idea of what those are, you can also find a voice memo now, which is pretty neat. You're able to then kind of save and sync those notes over as you would want. There's a quick to-do list which you can also create from your app and then push them over although you don't really have the ability to add notes directly from the watch itself. Other things on here including a Pomodoro timer for reminding you to move after a certain amount of time and then again some of these simple games and apps that uh, basically just tell you to test your reaction time. Uh, so this game here is all about tapping from 1 to a 9. Uh, and see how quickly you're able to complete that. Here's your simple dice game, which will allow you to roll these uh, dice virtually on the watch, which is also pretty neat. And other titles altogether here include the ability to uh, have a mind game, which is really just about testing your memory. You can remember where those minds are at, and then after a few seconds, find the shortest root to the flag. I found that maybe the most useful ones have been the currency converter, which you can also update in terms of the data whenever you're syncing it to your phone, but it will then allow you to tell what are the common currencies in different uh, cities and countries around the world. You can also set uh, various units as measurement, for instance US $1, how much that equates to euros. Holiday calendar also pushes over all the different events in various countries that you're in and you can then scroll through and see what are the holidays that are coming up and it's pretty fun because it seems like there are maybe more holidays than you would expect even though not all of them are going to be necessarily say a public day off. Here's one that's called a inspirational quote which will just push famous quotes uh, in a very beautiful kind of wallpaper background for you to read. So you get the idea. All of these ones, they're relatively simple and of course I would like them to see further expand on the selection, especially with third-party app developers. I hope we'll create more content and that will make it truly more of a smart ecosystem, but I like the fact that they are already trying to further expand that feature set. Now you can also long hold on here for a few seconds to change the watch face, which again you do have a ton of options. Again, over 150 from the store, which you're able to download and push over. All of them are pretty attractive. Once you're which are power intensive means that they are just uh, going to drain power a little bit more because they are dynamic and interactive. So animated watch faces do tend to again drain power a little bit more quickly. Other ones which are more retro in style but all of them are very convincing thanks to the high resolution of the display. And on certain watch dials you can see there will be a small icon that shows up down below there which you can click on to further edit certain widgets that are displayed on the watch. So you can change that from heart rate to step count for instance to a humidity level and the same thing goes on other interactive elements on the watch as well. So I think that's pretty cool and makes the entire watch just a little bit more interactive. Now moving into the accuracy and performance of the watch, if we talk about the step count part first, I will say the pedometer is doing a decent job. Uh, again, this is their fourth generation of their biosensors and it doesn't really get fooled all that easily. If you're just kind of shaking the watch, you can see that it's not getting counted as an actual step. It's calibrated quite well and has very few false positives. If anything though, I do find it to be a little on the conservative side. Sometimes if I do actually take a step, but it's too light, it may not necessarily register that as a step. There's maybe less than 5% margin of error that it will just be undercounting some of those steps, but nonetheless still is doing a good job in terms of estimating when you are typically active. One sensor here that has been done really well would be sleep. This is an intelligent sleep sensor which works throughout the entire day. That means if I take a nap right now and sleep for 5 minutes or 10 minutes, it will track all of that automatically and count that towards sleep. Accuracy of the sleep counting part is, I think, one of the best out of the smartwatches I've tested so far. Same thing goes with the other sensors, including heart rate and stress. All of those are doing very well in terms of pretty much the same numbers I saw compared to other smartwatches in a test I did earlier. 
The SBO2 counter is also pretty accurate. It does require you to sit relatively still for a couple of seconds, and sometimes the sensor might be a little bit picky in terms of position on your wrist, and if you move at all, it will basically stop the measurement. With that being said, I don't find it to be necessarily a far better experience than the GTS 2 or 3 from before. Those watches already delivered pretty good performance here, but in general, maybe this thing is just ever so slightly faster on measuring certain things like heart rate, Finally, the GPS part, I would say, has also been slightly improved. I do find this to now get a lock a little bit more quickly, even in a busier city-like environment, which is quite impressive and remained locked, yes, during the entire duration of the sport. Now, I will mention that there is one new feature that is supposedly coming to the GTS 4 line, including the ability for you to route maps directly on the watch. So, for instance, you can tell the watch that you want to return back to your original starting point, and then it will navigate you back. However, that that particular feature is coming out over a software update that will be getting released uh, in a couple of days, so at the time of its release and in this video, it's not yet a feature that I was able to officially test out. But now it's time to take a closer look at their companion app, which again is called Zep. It's the same app used for all of their wearables, and it's pretty simple and easy to use. Pairs quickly tells you your battery percentage, as well as all the stats at a quick glance, including more details related to your activity. The overall UI here is quite attractive in terms of its simplicity and all the icons have been refined. And then under device settings, you're able to further track whether you want certain features to be turned on or off, certain cards to be hidden from the carousel view, connect your Amazon account, as well as, again, create different to-do lists and notes for syncing over to the watch, as well as what types of notifications you want to have pushed over. And most importantly, these two tabs allow you to access the aforementioned mini app store, which you can find other content on here for you to download per your liking. Again, it's relatively limited selection at the moment moment, but it still is something that I do really appreciate and hope that it will further grow in the future. You can also take a look at, of course, custom watch faces and dials. So over here, all of those selection you can continue to check out. It's a mix of animated watch faces along with more professional looking ones, which you can pick per your liking and even create your own by using your own photo as the background. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Amazfit GTS 4. Again, the latest generation flagship wearable from Amazfit, and more than anything, it's a refinement of their previous gen models, still having a similar list of hardware features, at least on paper, but once you start using it, you do notice some details which have been improved, including, again, a beautiful display. UI here, I like the fact that they've added more mini apps to expand on the feature set plus the ability to answer phone calls, makes it a pretty versatile assistant on your wrist, especially when combined with the very long-lasting battery life, which I do appreciate. Uh, with that being said, again, this is probably still primarily oriented for folks that want to stay healthy and fit, plus something that looks relatively sleek and attractive, though at first glance it may not seem like anything too new from before. Again, a lot of these small details that have been gradually improved to get you just a slightly more optimized experience. And as a reminder, you can always pick the round version of the watch, the GTR4, which sells at the same $200 price point. You can check out more details if interested in the links down below, but for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Amazfit GTS4.